Even though technically this is a side dish, I'd still nail this whole bowl by myself. And it has to be one of the most ordered dishes on a Chinese takeaway menu. What is that, Ma? Egg fried rice. And it's super easy. People always want to overcomplicate it, which is fine, I get, you like lots of flavors, but a lot of the time, less is in fact more. Yeah, too much flavor, kill it. Well, too much flavor can kill it when matched with another main dish that doesn't go with a certain flavor. This is just one way Chinese takeaways and takeouts will be doing this. Remember, Chinese takeaway food is not traditional Chinese food. Doesn't mean it's not tasty though. But it's still tasty. Yeah, 100%. If you want to learn how to cook Chinese food at home from two Chinese chefs, this is your place to be. Yeah, this is the channel. Make sure to subscribe and like. Also, commenting helps us loads as well. It's absolutely free, costs you nothing, and it helps us a lot. So yes. thank you in advance. Spread the word. Yeah, spread the words. <laughs> right, first off, we're going to start with a rice cooker. Now, most takeaways restaurants are going to be using a rice cooker because it's so much easier and the argument of going, well, I can just do it in a pan, is fine. If that's what you want to do, you can cook this and then you can hot hold it for four or five hours safely. Whereas your pan is just going to sit there and burn if you want to hot hold it. Anyway, that's by the by, isn't it? Yes, it is. Do what you want, yeah. but we were cooking the rice with a rice cooker. Yeah, and also it's like most people have a toaster instead of use the grill for toast. It's, it's, it's just one of those things. You can argue going, a pan's just as easy, a grill's just as easy, but you're not using your grill. You're going to be using a toaster, aren't you? Oh, some even cook the toast in the microwave. What? <laughs> Who does that? The microwave had got grill, all right? What? Now the microwave got grill. Okay. It's still you a grill, grill though. Grill there. You can grill the, your toast in there if you no, want. Don't take, no, don't grill your toast <laughs> in the microwave. Just use, just use a toaster. <laughs> no kidding, all right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, anyway. <laughs> now the rice you use for takeaway cooking is important. Most takeaways, 90% of them are gonna be using a high grade, long grain rice. This isn't the stuff that you get in your Western supermarkets. You need to go to a Chinese supermarket to find the high quality rice that you need. This is essentially what they're all using. Now good takeaways will be mixing long grain rice with Thai fragrant rice. And they'll be doing this in like a two to one ratio. And what that does is you get the added flavor of the Thai fragrant rice with the good texture for fried rice for the long grain. Very few places are just gonna be using Thai fragrant. For fried rice, it can go stodgy. But again, if you like that style of cooking, by all means, use the Thai fragrant. So we're gonna use a rice cooker. Open it up. We're gonna make the better version with the long grain and Thai rice. Mix. Mix together, yeah. So we're gonna open our long grain. We've got one going in. Two. Two? To one. To one, exactly. If you want to know where you can get the rice, comments below. Please. <laughs> please. Here we go. Remember, commenting and liking this video helps us loads, so please do that. Also, if you share it, again, massive boost to our algorithm. So thank you in advance for that. So just one more time. It's two long grain to one Thai fragrant. Remember, 90% of takeaways are just going to be using the long grain. You can try it out, see which one you prefer. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Mix or no mix? Mix and match. No, don't mix and match. That's, Not yeah. mix and match. And try, try out your own ratios. You might yes. find different ratios work what better What we like may not be what you like. Yeah. Now we're going to fill this with water and we're going to drain it off three times. And we only do three times out of tradition and mystical, magical powers, don't we, Ma? Yeah. <laughs> no, you think I'm joking, but it is literally like it gives like energy or it's good vibes to the rice by doing it three times. Once is actually enough to get rid of the starch and clean the rice. But like we said, we do it three times out of tradition. Then after the third time, we're going to top it up a fourth time. And from the top of the rice to the first knuckle, we're gonna fill it with water, and this pretty much works for everyone. We've taught hundreds of thousands of people to do this over the internet over the years, and only a very few people it doesn't work for, and I'm pretty sure that they're measuring wrong. <laughs> but that's just how it is. It works for everyone, every chef that I've ever had in my kitchen. So yeah. The thumbs rule. The rule no, of thumb. No, rule of thumb. Wait, wait. <laughs> the thumbs rule, hey, <laughs> Fonz. Now we've washed it, we're just gonna place it into the rice cooker. Place the lid on, and then what, Mum? Bang! And then we're gonna 
press. Stop. And now, unlike a pan, we're free to do whatever we want. Yes, so definitely a rice cooker. Yeah. Do you want to dance or anything? You see, I can dance now. Right, I'm off. <laughs> we'll be back when this is done. Did you like that dance? <laughs> Did, didn't you? you enjoyed that way? What they should have done. All of this is covered from our first cookbook. If you want to know where to get that, comment below. A lot of people say that their rice sticks to the bottom of their rice cooker. There's two reasons for that. One is what, Ma? One is uh, you open up the lid too quickly. Yeah, so when that pins when it, to warm. Yeah, the best is just leave it for, for at least 10 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes, then you come and open up your rice. Yeah, because okay. a lot of the time it will actually be slightly too wet as well. Yes. Just after cooking. So we always let it rest for 10, 15 minutes if yes. possible. I mean, you can eat it. If you're going to eat it as like boiled rice, you can eat it straight away. Mm. But again, it is a little bit damp, isn't it? Yeah, we tend to cook it half an hour, then we eat it. Yeah. yeah. Also, there's another reason is that your non-stick has come off your pan, so it's sticking. Yeah, the pot is old now. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Also, no matter how much you spend on a cooker, whether it's hundreds to literally 20 quid or something like this, you're always going to get a slight browning to the base, regardless of your cooker. Yeah, it's because the is conduction that... is at the base of the pot. Yeah. Yes. It's not on the top, like grills on the top, so you get browning Brown on, on the top. top. Yeah. So because the cooking mechanism element is at the bottom, that's why you get brown. Yeah. yeah. Also, that part is perfect for fried rice. Yeah, to eat as well. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people say that the rice is slightly too wet, even though they've let their rice stand in the rice cooker. I'm saying if you ha definitely have left it at least 15 minutes, then there are two issues for this. One is what, Ma? You put too much water. Yeah, so you've put slightly too much water in. You know, I don't mind the rice is wet. Yeah, I think it's a I Western. prefer I prefer it wet than a bit dry, you know. Yeah, so when we eat our rice, I think you guys call it sticky rice. That's just rice to us. And you know when you have your grains of rice all separated, we call that underdone. <laughs> It just Not, swings around, yes, it's what you prefer. What, yeah. So when a lot of the time, when I, we started cooking on here, people were telling me their rice or their steamed rice always is a little bit sticky. I'm just like, well, that's how we eat it. That's yeah. how it's meant to be for us. And it took a while for me to figure out what you guys meant. You like what you like it. hundred percent. Yeah. The second reason that it's going clumpy, if it's not because of extra water, is because you're just using Thai fragrant rice, as I said earlier. A lot of people ask, I say, what rice are you using? And then they're saying this, and then I realise it's the rice you're using, why it's really sticky. And then when you're frying it, you're getting glump, um, gloopy rice or stodgy rice rather than the individual grained rice as you normally get in English takeaways. Yeah, there's another reason is the new crops, because they are new, they don't need too, that much water. Where it's sometimes the rice is a bit uh, older, you probably need more water. That could be one of the reasons. The, the issue with that is, it's like potatoes in England. You don't know until you get your bag of rice. Yes, essentially. exactly, yeah. yeah. So. I hope that cover most of your, your problem. The, these are the most standard questions that we get asked and we thought we would want to cover it because in our first video we did of this, we hadn't had the benefit of years of questions. Now we do. We wanted to make sure we cover everything. Yes. If you like to know anything, just comment. Always we'll comment. We'll get back to you. It's always me getting back to you as well. Yeah. So I, um, Yeah, we are. Well, you're going to pretend <laughs> that you're doing that as well. No, I read it as well. Your mum does yeah. actually read the comments, yeah. Yes, I do. But I doesn't reply. reply. But I don't have much time to do replies. It's because mum doesn't yeah. know how to reply to me. Yes. So no, not, not technical person anyway. No, you don't have to be. I do it all. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> right, this is ready now. We've let it sit for about 15 minutes. Look at that Voila, rice. Voila, look at that. Beautiful rice. We're literally just going to tray this out into a metal tray. A metal tray is better because it conducts the heat away from the rice much quicker. Because we want to cool this down within sort of like 60 minutes. See how fluffy you look? Yeah. When the rice cool, I always like See, to... See, the rice should just fall out yeah, if you didn't look right. at that, yeah. That brown bit is okay, a don't little bit worry brown. about it. But fried rice was invented to be used with old rice or day old rice. There's two reasons for that. One, it dries out the rice, it separates the um, little grains so they're not there. So they're not there. 
So they're separated, <laughs> not that they just get lost. And secondly, what it does, it reduces the water in the actual grains itself. So they slightly, what's called retrograde. So they basically go a little bit back to their non-hydrated form. And that changes the flavor profile a lot, which means you get more rice flavor in a smaller, um, what's the word? Area, surface area. So just a little bit tastier. And then we're just gonna set this to the side. Once this is cooled, we're gonna place tin foil over the top of it, put it into the fridge overnight for best results, but it works well after about two to three hours in the fridge. When you're ready to use it, take it out. And here is one we made earlier. Um, we, put, we put it into a plastic container just so it didn't take up so much space in the fridge, but that's the only reason why it started off in the metal tray. Essentially, we're just gonna take it off and like you can see here, those are the brown bits where it's stuck to the bottom. That's absolutely fine. And then we're going to place some of this into a bowl. All right, now we're going to add some salt into this. S salt? I missed you. Small amount of dark soy. If you want your rice darker, add more dark soy. Soy? Soy! <laughs> if you want it lighter, add less. And some light soy sauce. Remember, the dark actually goes a long way. Mixing it like this out of the wok, it means that you definitely coat all the rice evenly. Evenly, and it helps smash out any small lumps. Yeah, that's all right. Plus, takeaways, we just do this because it's very fast to then just use straight away. Yeah. Remember, we're teaching you takeaway cooking at home, not traditional Chinese cooking for this recipe, that is. So, that's that done. One egg. I'm just going to add just a pinch of salt, a little pinch of MSG, and then we whisk this really well. You want it really well whisked. Yeah. I think it's about right now, is it? Let me have a look. Yeah, lots of powder. In it. A lot of a bubble now. Not powder? Like, no, bubble. So much powder. You get like that fluffy powder, isn't it? Not bubble. <laughs> fluffy bubble. You nearly said powder again, yeah. didn't you? I think that's, yes. yeah, that's done. Now I'm going to get on with cooking it. Yep. Egg fried rice. Mmm. That was weird. <laughs> right, so we're going to add a lot of veg oil to the pan or wok, whatever you want to use. Before we start, a lot of people will say you can't get like the Chinese flavour at home in a non-stick wok. That is someone who doesn't know how to use their tools. All that is the vaporisation of the oil and the charring you get, which you can get very easily in a non-stick wok and at home. The reason why professionals like us would use carbon steel is because a commercial wok burner is 45 kilowatts, whereas the most a home one is likely to be is three kilowatts. There's a massive difference. You couldn't use one of these on one of those cookers because that coating would literally just be annihilated. Insulated. In incinerated. Insu yes. Yes. They'd be incinerated. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. the word for it. Yeah. I do always suggest though, if you're serious about Chinese takeaway cooking and you have an electric cooker at home, um, but it's not induction, pick up one of these. They're relatively cheap. I'll link this exact one in the description below. They're fantastic. Really are. Yeah, for home use. Yeah. Overnight rice is really important for a good fried rice because yeah, when it gets busy and you run out of overnight rice, we do obviously use fresh rice from a pot. But if we've run out that night, we actually make sure we cook more so we, on the next day we definitely have overnight rice. Now, when this oil is hot, this is important, that oil has to be hot. I'm gonna pour the egg directly into the oil, not in the middle, into the oil. And we're gonna stir, and this creates the ribbons. And part of getting that really deep, rich wok hay flavor at home without gas, because it is easier with gas, I'm not gonna lie. Right, Ma? Yes but you can do it at home if you know what you're doing, is making sure that this egg has a nice browning on the outside or char. Yeah, that's right. Let's make the flavor of Like it. that. Yes. And it really does make a massive difference. Now in goes your rice. And what we're doing here is I haven't moved it, I've just placed it in, and I'm tamping it down with the back of my ladle, or spoon as someone's gonna point out. I call it a ladle because we usually use a cooking ladle. And what this does, it knocks out any small lumps and actually helps it get closer to the base to allow you to get that deep char flavor or the wok hay breath of the wok that people talk about. In the past, I have said um, 
what care isn't a thing. Obviously it is a thing, but what I was talking about, or what I was trying to get people's attention about was that it doesn't have to be done in a walk. People always go, you have to have this walk, you have to have that walk. No, you just need to know what you're doing and then yes. you can get walk A. Right, smelling good now. Yeah, and I'm adding, gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit more MSG. Yes. Remember, you season a little and often. I always get people go, oh, there's so much salt and there's so much MSG in this in one of your recipes. I'm like, if you look at the amount that's going in, it's less than, it's probably around a third of a teaspoon. It's just, I'm doing what professionals do and we season a little bit and often, because you can add, you cannot take away. Wow. See, now it's ready because it's gone soft. Yeah. It's piping hot. And it, the way it moves yeah, is like get, wet sand. Yeah, malasa sugar. Mal yeah. And what did you say in the first video? We, it moves like what, mum? Oh, maggot. Yeah, say that again, mum? <laughs> maggot. Yeah, maggot. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. And here it is. Fried rice. Egg fried Egg rice. Fried rice. I'm going to try it out for you. Yeah, here we go. Like, I need to know what it is. Like I said, most of the time in the UK, people are ordering this with food as a side. Mm. But this, with a bit of curry sauce and chips, it's fantastic. In fact, if you want to see a fried rice, chip and curry sauce video, you need to comment below because we'll do it, won't we? Yes, definitely. We will. Just comment. Yeah. Anything, you, anything you can think of, just comment. Mm. I like the softness of the the blended yeah, it's, rice. Yeah, it's much nicer. Mm. There's a deeper flavour in the blended rice than there is with just the standard, um, Yeah. what's the word? Standard rice. Yeah, standard long grain. Yeah, this is just, it's nice, mm. soft. And because you haven't whacked a load of garlic, ginger or oyster sauce into that, the flavour of the rice and the cooked egg really comes through and it works so well. Remember, once again, less is often more. Mm. I think I've covered everything now. Yes. Obviously, we cook with vegetable oil. Don't use sesame oil to cook with. We never cook with sesame oil. It's a garnish. If you're going to use it, use it at the end, not to cook with. You can always garnish with a little spring onions as mm. well if you want. Yeah. However you want this, you can do it your way. But that is egg fried rice as a UK Chinese takeaway would cook it. As always, make sure to like, comment and subscribe because commenting helps loads and liking actually helps loads as well. Yes. Gets our videos out there to more people. I used to like uh, open a tin of sweet corn. Have to be Green Giant, not any other brand. Green Giant. We haven't been paid it. for that. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pour it over it with a curry sauce and a cooked shrimp and that's it. I hate shrimp. Mm. Thanks for watching mum. Happy cooking, happy eating. There we go, thanks guys, take care. So nice with the jasmine rice, isn't it? Mm -hmm.